I got this project that one of my friends asked me to do on the router. And of course the weather's been so good that I really haven't wanted to be down in the basement. So the piece of wood's been hanging out for a while and I thought today would be a good day to give it a shot. It's going to be an interesting piece. Uh, it's a live edge piece of maple and the story goes that it uh, is a, it's going to be a sign for his mother uh, and it fell from a tree uh, on their property. It's kind of a hit or miss thing. I told them no guarantees, but we could see what we're going to do. I've never really done a live edge thing before, so I'm kind of making it up as I go along. But I've taken this side we know is square and lined it up on the router table. And then I'm just going to take my speed square and try to square off a line. We can easily sand that out after it's done. So basically, that's giving me my work area. give or take as to what that's going to be our board right so we're going to do our work area in there so basically this is the short side up here right so I'm, I want my my wording up there and then it's going to trail off so let's get that out of the way so I have 16 and a half good inches so I'm going to mark there 16 and a half and we'll mark over here, 16 and one half. And then, and then go from here. Now, I think it's not gonna be a terribly big deal because it is a live edge piece. So if it's not perfectly square, nobody's really gonna see it, right? And at the end of the day, it's all about what you see and not what actually is. So we're gonna put it right. A wise woodworker once told me that if you can't hide your mistakes, make them obvious. And that's gotten me out of a lot of jams. Okay, so we got 16 and a half by 9 inches. Okay, so let's get started All right. with this. So we had X was 16 and a half and length was 9. I'm going to put that at a one inch board. Here's our work piece. Now, all they want is something simple. And it says Nana. Now, I'm going to go ahead with the old Lieber Baskerville, my favorite font. And we'll do that. Looks pretty good. Now, of course, I'm not one to, I'm not one to just leave it be, right? So, I'm going to add Ah, uh, I like that one. All right, uh, we'll save that and let's go back down and do it up. I got it all set up in the computer. So we have the material is the right size. Material is clamped down. We have a 90 bit in there. We are going to use this new position. I want to raise the bit. And when I turn the spindle on, now it's loud. Spindle is on.
So that's what came out. Uh, hard to see if I can point it out. Got some flaws in there, right? So it didn't do a great job. Now, remember how I talked about this is cut fresh off the lawn. That curves up a little bit. See how that's because it's not perfectly flat? So I'm gonna chalk that up to it not being perfectly flat. So in some spots it, it the computer doesn't know that it's not flat, so. Okay, so let's talk about the different kinds of bits that you can use with the X-Carve. So there's two kinds of carving. There is V-Carving, which utilizes a V-Bit, like this, uh, and then there is just straight flute carving, which utilizes a straight bit. Now, you can dive deeper into each one of those uh, by the types of bit that you can use. Everything that the X-Carve uses is on a quarter inch collet, so the shaft is gonna be a quarter of an inch wide. So the shaft is a quarter of an inch wide, but the actual cutting bit here is gonna be an eighth of an inch. Going deeper, you can have spiral bits like this one, uh, the way it's fluted will either pull the material up out of the piece you're carving or down into the piece you're carving. And this is going to be important, especially if you're carving with plywood or something like that, because by using the correct type of bit, you're not going to have tear out when, when you're carving a piece and it makes your lines a lot sharper. So typically you would use a down spiral bit for something like that. And then you have a straight bit, which doesn't go up or down. It just kicks the stuff out, uh, kicks the uh, sawdust or the chips out. And it's basically the, the chips are going to stay in the groove that you've already cut. These are my least favorite. I have a couple of them, but I don't like them. And I hold mainly to the down, I hold mainly to the down spiral bit. I want to try these new bits out. You can tell they're purple or bluish. Uh, an Amana tool spectra bit. And I haven't tried them yet, never knew, but supposedly they last longer than just the regular high speed steel bits. The smaller the bit to cut uh, allows you for much more detailed work, uh, but the trade-off is that you can't cut as much uh, depth and vice versa, the larger that you get, the more depth that you can cut. So a good rule of thumb to follow is I set my depth gauge to half the diameter of the cutting portion of the bit. In other words, this is an eighth inch bit, so I'm going to cut at one sixteenth of an inch deep. So every pass will be one sixteenth. The quarter inch, uh, the same thing. I will cut one eighth of an inch deep every pass. So if you're cutting through three quarter inch pine, that's 12 passes to cut through the entire piece. So I always try to err toward a larger bit if I'm cutting big letters. The problem is, is that detail work. If I'm cutting out letters or something like that, like say the letter A, those corners are going to be more rounded with the bigger bit than a nice tight sharp line. So some of the fonts that you're going to cut out might not be so detailed with the bigger bit. Now moving on. We have V-bits. V-bits are typically used for sign work where the depth of the cut is not nearly as important as the design features. The V-bit will move up and down along the workpiece, so it can make much more detailed cuts and it can speed up your carving by like a billion times, basically, because every time it comes into a spot that's narrow, it will just pick up the bit and it will use this tip and then it will go down deeper into your pass. So the biggest and the widest one you can get, well, you can get as wide as you want, uh, but I, the biggest and widest one that I use is a 90 degree V-bit. So the idea is it's gonna cut out more material with each pass and you're trading off detail. Here's a good 60 degree bit right here. You can see that that's a little bit narrower, so you're gonna get your detail work is gonna be much better, but it's gonna take a little bit longer to carve things out. And then when you get down into really fine detail work, I have a 30 degree bit in my in my right hand and then a 15 degree bit in my left hand. These take a long time to carve out, but you can get into some really precise design work with them. Okay, so not really super happy with the outcome of this one. Already told my buddy that he needed to send me more blanks to print it because I don't like it. One of the biggest problems I've had with this particular card is this is a very thin font. So I try to maybe add a little depth to it by digging in on my zero point a little bit farther than I should. I, when I set my zero point, I kind of set it down into the wood. I really do it by eyeball, which is not great. The upside is the X-Carve actually has a Z-axis determination thingamabob, and I'm just too cheap to buy one. Anyway, this is kind of the outcome. You can see the Solo Cup, the colors didn't uh, do too well, it ripped off a little bit of the paint. 
and it's muddy in there and whatnot. So again, I'm gonna try to get a better one and we'll go from there. All right, so I had some trouble today with the X-Carve. I told Daryl that he had to get me more blank so that I can do up some signs the right way because I'm not gonna give him stuff that I don't think is any good. And the next rainy day that we get, I'll get back down here and make up his signs for him. I also have to do a couple of more signs and what they're going to say is I'd really rather feel bad in Maine than feel good anywhere else. So there I go, my friends. I'll see you soon.